Good morning. I am Stephen Edholm from SkillCult.com and YouTube.com slash SkillCult. Today I'm introducing the Cordwood Challenge 2018. So a couple of years ago, I challenged myself to cut my own firewood with an ax, uh, no saws allowed. So I cut a cord of wood and I learned a lot and just like I thought I would. And I had a lot of fun like I thought I would, but actually more than I thought I would. And so in 2017, I challenged other people to do that as well. Last year, we had 13 of us cut 12 cords of wood, which is a pile four feet high, eight feet wide, and 48 feet long. It was a great success. We had one minor injury, but other than that, everyone had a great time and everyone progressed greatly in their ax skills. Today, we're gonna run around a little bit and talk about the project, kind of introduce the project and concerns, who should do it, all that kind of stuff. All right, some rules, recommendations, and guidelines. First of all, axes only, no saws allowed. There's one exception for saws, I'll tell you that in a second. An ax is anything that resembles an ax from a hatchet to a splitting maul. I don't recommend that you use splitting mauls. They're actually not gonna be that effective. Most of them won't be that effective on ax cut wood anyway. And using the ax that you chop with is gonna teach you a lot. A thin ground, relatively light ax is not the best thing for splitting wood necessarily. So you'll have to have your act together. You'll have to dial in your accuracy, your technique, and strategy. You know, everything's gonna have to be just right or it's not gonna work. So that just pushes you. If you have larger pieces, you can split them as much as possible with your ax or a pair of axes, or you can just whip out a wedge. So if you have to carve a hardwood wedge, you get time you know, using your ax as a carving tool, for instance. You see what I'm saying? It just kind of pushes you to go to the next level and learn what you can get away with. The one exception for saws is making the back cut when you're felling. So you have to cut the front notch with an ax, that's mandatory, but if you need to, in order to fell the tree safely, you can make the back cut with a hand saw so that you can wedge it in a certain direction, but otherwise no saws allowed. I don't care if you run around the woods salvaging standing dead wood or naturally fallen dead wood. I think I'm gonna make one exception for trees that have already been felled by someone else. If someone has gone through an area and just dropped whole trees and left them there, you're welcome to use those. Uh, you don't have to fell them, which is kind of, you know, takes out one of the important steps in the process but I understand that maybe someone would have access to that. I'm not gonna make exceptions for anything else, like for instance, if you can just gather you know, pieces of wood that are sawn into long lengths already or short lengths or anything like that. I just have to draw the line somewhere and I'm gonna draw the line there. Keep in mind though that it's very difficult to process dead dry wood. Green wood's much easier to process, so if you have green trees that need to be cut or that it's okay to cut for whatever reason, I would highly recommend that you use green trees. Also keep in mind that you should know what you're doing when you're running around cutting green trees. At least think about it and try to understand. Look at the forest as a timeline and what's been going on and what's going to happen in the future. Trees take a long time to grow. Some of them grow fast, but most of them don't. And they will regrow, but that's not a reason to just walk into the forest and cut you know, anything and everything down without paying any attention. It does matter what we cut. It has an effect on the wildlife, it has an effect on the health of the forest and how it develops, and we can steer that in intelligent and useful ways to increase diversity, increase wildlife habitat, and increase forest health. Everything's been cut already, right? I mean, the whole, the whole world has been cut down and regrown several times for the most part. It's very, you know, virgin forest is very uncommon. So there's gonna be opportunities to improve that stuff that's been regrowing. The minimum amount of wood this year is a rick and our ricks are gonna be eight feet long and four feet high with straight sides. So pound in a couple of stakes, tie a wire or a post across the top and fill that thing up. The wood can be of any length, I don't care. The only thing I would prefer is that if you stack it in a way that you can actually measure the cubic feet that you end up with. So at the end of the year, we can tally the total cubic feet and the total cords cut because that's just a really interesting statistic. Otherwise, I don't care what you cut and how long it is, as long as you fill the rick, Every piece of wood in the rick has one cut on each end. And so if I cut 24 inch lengths and you cut six foot lengths, we both made the same number of bucking cuts. Bucking cuts represent the most work in the cordwood challenge overall. So that's why this year we're gonna measure everything off of the number of bucking cuts. You can cut six foot lengths, you can cut 20 foot lengths, or you can cut 12 inch lengths, I don't care. 
but that gives you the option to cut what you need. Like if you want to make charcoal, for instance, then you can spend a lot of time gathering a large quantity of wood cut to longer lengths. And let's move on to why we would be crazy enough to do this project in the first place. Good enough. I heard her move. That was pretty clumsy and inefficient, but I haven't picked up an ax to speak of hardly since about June 1st, and it's late December now. That's what happens with time off. But because I cut a lot last year and the year before, and I have all this time leading up to that using axes, I will warm up quicker this year, get back on point, and progress further. And that's what it takes, is time served. An axe is only as good as the person driving it. The cordwood challenge is uh, you know, designed to be basically a real life laboratory, so it's satisfying to work in. You get to run into real life situations that you have to deal with. Bottom line is you're gonna have a real hard time finding a better way to practice your practical real life ax skills than processing firewood with an ax. Who should do the cordwood challenge? I have to say right off that I don't think this is a good project for complete beginners with an ax. That may sound weird since the project is supposed to increase our skills with an ax, but it's just a matter of timing and attitude and how you go into learning to use an ax. So while this will provide you with a lot of practice, going into something when you don't know what you're getting into, you don't know how much work it is, you don't know what can go wrong, no matter how much I tell you it's dangerous, you don't really understand what that means on the ground. And going into a project like this and saying, I'm gonna do this in this certain amount of time just isn't really, I don't think, a good idea. I'm not gonna tell anyone not to do it. That's your decision, you're an adult. And if you're not, we'll talk about that in a minute. But that's my advice. What I think you should do is aim for next year. Say, I'm gonna spend this year getting my gear together, learning stuff, practicing, getting warmed up, and then do it next year. If you happen to progress really fast, we have a long time until September 1st. So maybe in the spring, you'll be like, well, this is going great. I'm doing well, I have some wood already. I'm gonna do it, that's fine. You don't have to tell me you're doing it. You don't have to register anywhere or anything like that. And you don't have to finish if you start it, but I still recommend that you don't start it mentally like that. You know, just take time to get warmed up. If you think you really need that challenge to do anything and to act at all, I think that's something that you should address separately. Okay, not by, not by challenging yourself to something that you're so unfamiliar with. Minors are welcome, but I need to talk to a parent or guardian before you start doing anything. They can get a hold of me through my website, skillcult.com. I want to actually talk to them, make sure they're apprised of the dangers involved. And that's the deal, period. Don't do anything, don't make any videos, don't use a name cordwood challenge, don't leave posts anywhere, don't leave comments anywhere until I talk to somebody. A big problem with this project is a lot of people won't understand that how dangerous this is or how it can be dangerous and the things that can go wrong like specific things and that's real important because when you're using an axe you need to be constantly thinking ahead a move and thinking about where that edge is going to end up and all kinds of weird stuff can happen this is no place for wishful thinking you know there's certain kind of people that say drive around blind corners just in the in the hope or faith or something that there's not going to be a car coming the other way in order to use an axe safely you have to be able to predict some of the things that are going to happen ahead of time and that takes time to learn yes people can tell you a lot of those things and that's hugely helpful 
but with any dangerous activity, say learning to drive is a great example, you go through this danger phase where you start to find out what the boundaries are and what you can get away with and what you shouldn't do. I have moments in my history of driving and using axes where I was sobered up and I remember them vividly. You know where they were just like okay here's a boundary like whoa i need to like approach this with more respect one was almost sticking a hatchet in my forehead another one was you know almost cutting my leg really badly with a glancing hard blow from an axe so you just have to go through these things and that's kind of this danger phase and again people don't really understand what can go wrong that's really what i'm trying to say that and the nature of axe work in general and the nature of working with heavy you know, pieces of wood, standing trees, felling trees, just makes this an inherently dangerous activity, period. When you pick up the axe and you walk into the woods, you're taking a risk, and that risk is actually pretty high. There's a good argument to say that this whole project, or learning to use an axe, and using an axe in today's modern age when we really don't need them, and there's safer alternatives, is just totally dumb. And I think it's good to look at that argument. Now, personally, I don't agree from my perspective, but I think a great exercise before you decide to do this is to go look at it from that side. Look at it as someone who's just like, dude, why, why would you do that? Okay, just look at it that way. And when you make a decision to do this, make it a decision and make it based on your reasons, not my reasons, not anyone else's reasons and don't make it based on no reasons. Make it a decision, own the decision, and own the consequences of what happens because of that decision. So my disclaimer would basically be that I provide this framework for you to explore your act skills and for kind of a community to build around this idea and so we can interact with each other and help each other out. What you do with that or any information that you get from either me or anybody else is your responsibility like you're making a decision to engage that and go do something with it but you, by acting on that this is your choice you know this is what you choose to do we have this modern idea that there's always supposed to be someone watching out for our safety uh, sorry i'm talking to americans here by the way and uh, i'm sure it's like this some other places but from what i can gather it's much worse here we have this idea, this authoritarian idea that someone else is supposed to tell us what to do and keep us safe and they're supposed to head off, you know, accidents for us. Well, in reality, there's no guarantee that any information that you consume is accurate. And, you know, you're choosing to act on this information. You know, anything where we say this, you know, this information was supposed to be accurate and supposed to keep me safe and all that stuff, that's just a human construct, period. You know, it's not reality. You, you don't have to do this or anything else. You choose to do it and you choose to avail yourself of available information and ideas and go out and put them into practice. So if you walk out in the woods with an ax and you swing it and you cut your leg and bleed to death, well, whose fault is that? Like, why did that happen? Ultimately, that happened because at the end of the line, you picked up the ax and you swung it. An ax or tree is neutral. An axe or tree is not going to hurt you. You're going to hurt yourself with an axe or tree. Worst case scenario where you're like innocent and you're, you know, you're a victim of circumstance is you're walking through the woods and a branch falls on your head. And maybe you fall on your axe when you're not swinging it. Well, don't walk under trees or carry an axe if you don't want that to happen. Now, this attitude of personal responsibility and taking responsibility for your actions and the consequences thereof is key to working safely with dangerous tools and dangerous environments. If you're not doing that, then you're not actively engaged in your own safety. And this is critical for using an ax because you have to build a database of what can go wrong and where that ax blade is gonna end up. And you're constantly adding to that. So you need to be super engaged and really just uh, present with the idea that it's you that's gonna hurt yourself with this tool. That's not just a disclaimer, it is. You know, is. I'm not responsible for what you do to yourself it's also really, really good advice. If you don't understand it, it doesn't quite make sense, keep thinking about it. I'm looking forward to meeting new people and having this challenge go well. We had one accident last year. Let's hope we have no accidents this year and try to make it so. Please avail yourself of whatever information that you might need 
to do this well and do it safely. I'm providing a video playlist of stuff that both that I produced and other people produced and some cool old training videos and just vintage footage of axemen at work. Check that out. Read the books that I recommend. Morris Kahansky's Bushcraft and Dudley Cook's The Axe Book. Those are pretty much required reading. If, or seriously, if you're going to do this and you haven't already read them, get them and read them. You won't regret it. They're excellent books anyway. And keep following that video playlist because I hopefully will keep putting stuff in there, both my stuff and other people's stuff. Anything that I think could really help with this challenge. To follow that and follow the whole project, follow me on social media. I'm SkillCult on Instagram, Facebook, SkillCult.com, YouTube.com slash SkillCult. And just to keep appraised of everything and catch new videos and what's going on with the project. If you use social media, please use the hashtags, hashtag AxeCordwoodChallenge, hashtag WorkingAxes. So thanks for watching and participating, or just being supportive of the people that are doing the challenge. If you can't do it, I'm looking forward to meeting new people and also seeing some familiar faces, because I know a lot of the people are coming back to do it again. And that's understandable. It's really fun. Uh, for me, there's just nothing that's satisfying in the same way as being out in the woods with my axe chopping up some wood. It's relaxing, but aggressive at the same time. It's good physical exercise, but it's kind of meditative, and I get to be outside in nature learning about the woods, and uh, it's all good. And I love having the excuse of the cordwood challenge to get me out there doing it, because otherwise I always put it off in favor of something more important, right? I should be building something, or fixing my garden, or taking care of my trees, or any number of things that I probably should be doing instead, but I'm not. I'm going to do the cordwood challenge, and that's that. And the final rule is don't hurt yourself. Make it your goal, not just to cut this quantity of wood, but to do it safely and come out the other end unscathed.